What up everybody, it's your boy Sack the King up in this motherfucker, man. Now as y'all can see from the title of this video, yes, I joined the army at 17. I was only 17, 17. Yeah, for all y'all old heads out there, that's that Rick James, you feel me, 17. But before I get off into that story, man, I just want to say shout out to everybody who's been subscribing, shout out to everybody who's been watching. If you haven't been uh, subscribing, but you've been watching, hit that subscribe button below so you can be the first to know and help the channel grow because I'm giving away $100 once I reach 1,000 subscribers to a random subscriber. Uh, but yeah, let's get into it, right? So if you've been following my channel or you've watched any of my other videos, then you know that this is a continuation of all the stories that I've just told below this. Now, if you are new to the channel or if you're a first time viewer, uh, won't you go ahead and stop this video and go and look at maybe about three or four of the other videos underneath this starting with the best decision I ever made the YCP and the first job I ever had challenge so you can get caught up into this story that I'm about to tell now for those of y'all who are already up to speed I joined the army at 17 now let me backtrack a little bit with that before I get off into that while I was in YCP which I told y'all the story of that. If you haven't checked that out, go check that out. It's a pretty interesting story. Um, they used to have recruiters come from the all branches of service, Army, Marines, Navy, uh, and Coast Guard, Air Force, all of that shit, National Guard, all of that, right? Because we're on a National Guard base. But um, that was also a school where you could get your GED, as I explained in the other video, uh, which I ended up obtaining and also it's a place where we took the ASVAB test now the ASVAB test is the test that you have to take in order to qualify to get into the military right so I scored pretty high on the ASVAB uh, if, I'm, if, if memory serves me correctly I, I was up there I could have had pretty much any job I wanted but I'm gonna get into the job so stay tuned man rock with you boy this is an interesting video right okay so I, I took it back because uh, as they were doing their presentations, right? Now, mind you, I'm two hours away from where I live in Grambling at the uh, time. And I'm in Alexandria. Well, really, I'm in Pineville at Camp Beauregard, which is a National Guard base, right? So I'm listening to all... I'm, my mind was already made up that I was going to go to the military anyway. Because if you scroll down a little bit more, you'll see one of my stories. I had a child at 15. So I'm 17 now. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do with my life. I've already dropped out of school. I've already made a commitment to be in this program. I know I'm going to, you know, go take my GED test soon. And uh, I know I'm going to pass it because I'm a smart motherfucker, right? And I know I'm going to graduate this. So the next things I need to be thinking about is getting some motherfucking money. And I tried that with the job challenge, but y'all see how that went in that last video. But let's fast forward so uh as those people were coming and doing their presentations i just remember that there was a marine recruiter and it was a black dude i don't remember his name or anything like that but i remember his presentation was just so strong to me like like we're the baddest motherfuckers on the planet you know what i'm saying and at the time at 17 i thought i was the baddest motherfucker on the planet because i've done every gangster thing that you can do or be considered gangster and I'm gonna make another video on that shortly after this video so stay tuned and keep it locked in and hit that subscribe button below so you can be the first to know and help the channel grow when I drop that video you feel me but um so at this time at 17 I've already done so much gangster shit you know what I'm saying and I would go on to do way more gangster shit but at this point at 17 I had done enough gangster shit that most grown adults hadn't even done yet you feel me but anyways, that's neither here nor there. The point is, is I thought I was one of the baddest motherfuckers on the planet. You know what I mean? And I thought that shit for a long ass time from the age of maybe 13 on up into my 20s and even into my 30s. Now, do I think I'm the baddest motherfucker on the planet? No. But one thing about me, if you know me for show, hey, man, I ain't starting no shit, but I damn sure ain't taking no shit either. You feel me? Anyways, so... I was like, man, when I graduate and I get my GED, if this job challenge shit don't work out, I'm going to join the motherfucking Marines. You know what I'm saying? So this is how it went. 
as I told y'all in the job challenge video what occurred and why I didn't stay within that program right go back and watch that video if you need to be caught up to speed so I get back to Gramlin you know what I'm saying and of course my mom is trying to put the pressure on me like she was on the phone in that last video where I was telling y'all about where I was like fuck this shit right so I'm like shit I'm I'm about to you know, go up here and, and hit the Marine office, you know what I mean? And tell them I want to be a Marine. I already got a GED at this point. Uh, I already got a high score on the ASVAB. I don't got no felonies. I'm like the perfect fucking recruit. Plus, I think I'm the baddest nigga in the world, right? So, you know, I remember the first day that I got back to Gremlin, right? Uh, I go to my mom's job. She was the apartment. She was the manager of apartment complex. I forget what the name of the apartment complex is, but it was in Ruston, right? So, you know, I'm talking to her and I'm telling her, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. We'll do it. You know what I mean? So I remember this girl came into her office and her name was, should I say her name? Yeah, we cool. You know, it's been 20 years. We're, we're still cool to this day. Uh, her name was Misty. I ain't going to give out her last name, but her name was Misty from Ruston, Louisiana. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it was her birthday. It just happened to be her birthday. And this was like August I want to say 8th or August, yeah, August 8th of 2000. Yeah, August 8th of 2000 cuz I cuz I met her on her birthday, right? So So I just remember being like struck by her like, "Damn, who is this?" You know what I'm saying? Like, man, that took my mind all off the Marines at the time. I'm just like, "Damn, mom, hook me up." My mom was like, "Boy, that girl got twin sons." You know what I'm saying? And she's older than you. Now, like I said, it was her birthday. She had turned 25. I'm 17. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, man, say, man, you know. Shit, I already had a damn near two-year-old kid my damn self. You know what I mean? But I'm on some grown shit. And my whole aura and swag at the time, you would have thought I was like 21 at the time. You feel me? And i always been like that because I always hung out with older people since I was like 13. I always hung out with older people. You know what I'm saying? So this, this wasn't no different. It, it wasn't no, like... If you go back to that video, I had a kid at 15. I told y'all my son's mom was 19 when she had my son, and I was 15. But like I said, my whole swag, she just seemed right past my age because my whole swag was like that of a, at that time, was that of an 18-year-old. So this time at 17, my swag is at like a 21-year-old. You feel me? So anyways, and I bring her up because once I, once I got her phone number, I started kicking it with her, you know what I'm saying? I didn't go to the to the recruiting office that Monday like I told my mom I was going to. I just started kicking it with this chick. And we kicking it pretty tough for a couple weeks, you know what I'm saying? And so I remember one day I was sitting at her house, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, damn, like, this chick got her own car. She got a good-ass job. You know, she got her own crib. Like, she got her own money. Like, you know, like, what the fuck am I bringing to the table? i never been a bum-ass nigga. Like, you can ask any bitch that ever fuck with me. i never been the type of nigga to leech off no bitch or be a bum-ass nigga or, or nothing like that. Like, since I was 15 and I had a kid, i already been a go-getter and a hustler. And, you know, maybe I'll make a video about my very first hustles ever since I was a kid in elementary school. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just been instilled in me. My parents was hustlers and hard workers their whole lives and still are to this day. So it just been instilled in me to be like that. I never just wanted to live off of no bitch. You feel me? Even at this time right here where I was coming back and I was down bad. You know what I mean? I had to make something crack because I had a kid, like I said. So... I remember sitting at her house one day, you know what I'm saying, and I'm watching BET, and I see these army commercials, it was like right at the end phase of be all you can be, right, because the very next month they changed the army slogan to army of one, you know what I mean, anyways, so I'm like, man, I gotta make something shake, man, I already told my mom that I'm about to join the motherfucking marines, uh, you know, I'm fucking with this chick for a couple weeks and I'm seeing like she don't need me. So at any time that we and her get into an argument, which we never did, she can just up and bounce. You feel me? And just be like, nigga, get on with yourself. So I'm like, you know what, man? Fuck this. Let me call the Marines. Like, so I call the Marines. I'm like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I explained to him my name you know, that I got a GED, all this other good shit, right? That I'm the perfect candidate to come down there. I can come down there and sign up that date. He's like, 
yeah, come on down to the office. I'm like, I can't come to the office. I don't have a car. And the Marine office was located way the fuck somewhere off in the boondocks in Ruston, Louisiana, right? So he's like, yeah, well, if you come down here, then, you know, I'll be able to. I'm like, you can't come pick me up? He's like, nah, you know, you got to come down here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm like, all right, whatever. So like I said, then the Army, that's that's what happened. I was watching Sita's World, matter of fact. I was watching music videos, Sita's World. If y'all remember the old school niggas that watched this, hey, man, you remember Sita's World used to come on BET, right? So after I hung, it's like something, a coincidence happened because that's actually what happened. After I hung up the phone with the Marine dude, the Army commercial had come on. Now, mind you, I hadn't even thought about joining the Army. I thought about my mind was set on the Marines, you know what I mean? So... I remember the army commercial it came on and it was like it came on maybe like two or three times from the time I called the Marines to the time I actually picked up the phone and said, you know what, man, maybe this shit is trying to tell me something. So I called the army recruiter. That's what I did. I called the armor recruiter and he's like, yeah, you know, this is Sergeant Brown. I still remember his name, Staff Sergeant Brown. And he was like, uh, you know, he, he was asking me a few questions and I explained to him like, hey, man, I got a GED. I scored high on the ASVAB. You know, I ain't got no felonies, nothing like I'm ready to go. You know what I mean? He was like, how old are you? I'm like, I'm 17. He was like, well, your mom signed the paper. I'm like, yeah, my mom signed the paper. She want me to go too. You know what I mean? He was like, shit, where you at? I'm like, Shit, I'm over here at such and such address. He was like, I'll come get you right now, man. We can go get something to eat. We can go up to the college. We can go fuck with some bitches. I'm like, shit, for real? So sure enough, like 30 minutes later, he came and picked me up. You know what I'm saying? And we went to go eat at Burger King right there in the in the middle of Rustin right there. And I believe that the Burger King is still right there. You know what I mean? And it's right next to the Sonic on that main road right there across from Louisiana Tech campus. Right there by Griff's and Sonic and then you had the Burger King right there and the Dollar General was like right behind that right and right across the street is the Navy and the Army recruiting offices so we talk you know he buy me a meal or whatever he talk he like man you should join the Army he was he was trying to sell me on the Army because I, I explained to him like man I wanted to be a Marine and do do he's like man the Army does all the same shit he started you know I'm telling him like man I want to be this I want to be that he's like man you can go join the special forces you can join the Rangers and all this other shit now scroll back to a lot of my videos and you'll see I actually did sign up for the special forces and I and I told y'all the story of what happened with that you know what I mean but anyways this is a prequel to all of that shit right so Sergeant Brown was so cool, man. He was like, man, check it out, man. This is what you, you know, get when you join the army. Whoop, 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 whoop. You know what I mean? He was like, you know, he had sold me on the army and he was so cool. I'm like, damn, if this cool ass niggas like this in the army. And then I went into the recruiting office and the other recruiters was just hella cool. Now, mind you, of course, they were hella cool because they were trying to, you know, uh, look out for their boy and be cool. Like, yeah, you should join the army. Whoop, whoop, whoop. But honestly i was already sold i was already the perfect candidate because i did everything i had to do to get the fuck out of ruston louisiana that is the main reason why i joined the military to get the fuck out of that racist ass state and town you know what i'm saying and yeah i did that you know what i mean so i signed the paperwork to join the army right now here here goes another little story within the story right so i remember fast forward you know what i mean uh, my my dad he would he had to take me to Meps, you know what I mean? And Meps is like where you go for your physical and all that shit, and then uh, where you pick your job at, right? So I remember. I, I wonder if my dad remembers this. Dad, if you watching, hey, hit the comments if you remember this, right? So I remember my dad and me driving. We had to drive all the way to Shreveport, which is an hour away from Gramlin at the time. That's where we were staying at, you know, and so. Uh, my dad was my dad was gonna join the Navy, you know what I mean. But uh, you know, he ended up meeting my mom, and he never went to the Navy. So he's telling me all these jobs, you know, I can get, you know. But it's all stuff that my dad is interested in. Now, mind you, at the time I was just trying to fuck bitches, you know what I mean. I didn't give, a, I didn't really even put any thought into what kind of job I wanted. I just wanted to kick ass and take names later. That's what I thought that the military was all about. Come to find out, it's so much more to the military than just that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but if you want to do that, trust me, they they got somewhere to put your ass. You know what I'm saying? And it's called combat arms, special forces or rangers or or any of them combat arms. 
MOSs. You know what I'm saying? If you're a, a veteran or active duty watching this, you already know what I'm talking about. So anyways, so I remember my dad gave me this long ass lecture about all these kind of jobs that I should get and what I could do later on and all this other shit, right? So I'm like, all right, dad, you know, I'm listening for the whole hour drive, right? So we get there. I take my physical and, and it get time to, it get time to, uh, it get time to pick my job, right? So, so based on what your ASVAB score is, you could only have so many kind of jobs. Well, I had a high as ASVAB score, so I could have picked any fucking job. You know what I mean? So I remember sitting there and the guy's like, you know, what kind of job are you interested in? And, and like I said, I ain't never really had no fucking job before. And I damn sure wasn't about to be no cook because like I said in that job challenge video, that's what... I was doing I was in the food service program because they was giving out a check right but I know I didn't want to be no cook you know what I mean like nigga I'm not gonna join the military to be a cook I'm like I can do that shit I can go to fucking chef school or something if I wanted to do that and no knock on no cooks because hey man in the war time hey man you depend on them cooks and shit you feel me so anyways um so I remember sitting there and I was like uh I was like he, he, he was going over a bunch of jobs. My dad's sitting right across from me. I'm sitting next to the to the person who, you know, not the recruiter, but the counselor or whatever, career counselor or whatever. And I just remember saying, you know, after he's, he's talking, I, I didn't want to hear what he had to say no more. So I'm like, man, which job has the girls, right? That's exactly what I asked him. Bro, I swear to God, my dad gave me the most disappointing look I've ever seen in my life from any I don't think nobody's ever gave me a disappointing look like that like like if my dad could have reached over and Bart Simpson choked the fuck out of me like Homer used to do Bart my dad would have did that shit because you got to think he talked to me for a whole hour about all these different kind of jobs and and trades and shit like my dad is like my dad is a master of all so many different trades like welding truck driving electrical stuff mechanic so he's very like vast in knowledge in so many different areas but none of that shit ever like attracted me or or interested me you know what i mean and and really i wish i would have watched my dad fix on cars or electronics or you know all that shit because it it pays now as an adult i know that you know what i mean to have a trade uh, but then I was just worried about some bitches. I'm 17. Y'all got to remember, keep that in context. I'm 17. You feel me? I was only 17. But anyways, uh, so I straight up asked the career counselor, like, Hey, which job has the most girls? You know what I mean? And, and I just remember my dad being just like so disappointed. Like my dad would have just reached over and choked the fuck out of me if he could. Right. So the recruiter or the counselor was like, well, there's medical. The medical field ha probably has the most girls of, since that's what you're so interested in. <laughs> but <laughs> me being interested in girls is how I got into the situation to begin with because I already had a damn kid moving too fast. You feel me? So I'm like, mm, nah, I ain't into needles. I ain't, I ain't into none of that. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, all right, well, what about finance? Finance has, you know, a lot of females. And I'm like, mm, I know myself like mm, I'm going to end up taking somebody money. You know what I mean? Like, nah, I don't want to be in charge of no money. You know, that's what I was thinking at the time. Like, I don't want to take no money. Like, nah, I'm going to fuck around and, and take some money. So then he was like, well, other than that, you know, there's the supply field. And I'm like, supply? What is that? So he kind of explained it to me. So, you know, it didn't sound like no medical shit. It didn't sound like no motherfucking uh way I could take nobody money so I'm like all right cool like yeah I looked at it you know sign I was like shit sign me up you know what I mean he was like all right cool so he signed me up you know what I mean longer story short uh I leave my house I joined the army officially on September 12th 2000 one year and one day before the September 11th attacks and I already made a video about that how about how the September 11th attacks uh change my life forever so go back and watch that video after this one right so uh so i joined the army i'm in the army now i'm getting shipped off the boot camp you know what i'm saying they sent me to uh to columbia south carolina fort jackson aka relaxing jackson you know what i'm saying and this is a co-ed 
basic training. So I'm like, so we get there. I'm like, hell yeah, it's bitches around this bitch. Like I done already clicked up with a few niggas, man. You know, shout out to my boy, James Edgar Ross. He was from South Carolina. I believe he was from Columbia, South Carolina. But James Edgar Ross, man, I haven't seen this dude since after AIT, man. We used to get into the most shit in AIT, and I'll probably save that for another video of just Ross, man. Whatever happened to Ross, man? Like, he was the best man at my wedding in AIT, and that's definitely a whole nother video, you feel me? But James Edgar Ross, man, that nigga was down as fuck, man. So shout out to him wherever you are in the world, man. I haven't been able to find him on no Facebook or nothing. And I've been looking for years, man, because that nigga was so solid and down. So shout out to South Carolina. Hey, man, I've met a couple real niggas out of South Carolina, man. One of my current best friends, uh, Woods, is from South Carolina. Shout out to Woods. He's from Florence, South Carolina. But this nigga, James Edgar Ross, was, he said his full name all the time, was from Columbia, South Carolina, man. So shout out to him, man. But anyways, it was a couple more real niggas that I met too, you know what I mean? Uh, but that nigga just happened to be from South Carolina. So we so we in basic training, you know what I'm saying? And I'm what is called uh, a hold under. That means like I have to wait to start basic training, you feel me? So, so we all kicking it. One day they wake us up. Early in the morning, they bring us out. Now, I'd been there for probably about like a month. Yeah, maybe like a month. So there's already a couple little bitches I'm trying to holler at. You feel me? There's already a couple of them little thing things like I'm trying to get with. And I'm like, yeah, once we start basic training, that one and that one is mine. I got dibs on them too. You feel me? So anyways, so they bring us all down. You know what I mean? All the males, all the females. They, they put us in formation. They're like, hey, when I call your name, you go to this side. If I don't call your name, you stay right here, right? So they call in everybody's name, you know what I mean? So my name ended up being called. So I have to go over here, you know, to this little area. But I'm looking around like, damn, there ain't no bitches over here. You know what I'm saying? But it's all the homies. All the homies that I kick it with is right there. So I'm like, shit, fuck these hoes. You know what I'm saying? We going, you know, whatever they got planned for us is whatever. I'm with the homies, you know what I'm saying? So we like wondering what's going on. They like, hey, go upstairs and get all your bags. And come back down. So we like, where are we going? They like, you guys are being shipped to Fort Knox. I'm like, Fort Knox? Where the fuck is that? They like, Kentucky. You got 15 minutes to go get all your stuff and get on these buses, right? So I'm like, damn, it's like, it's like sick. It's like 30, 40 motherfuckers of us. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, I'm with like 10 of the homies, you know? Maybe, maybe like five of the homies, you know what I'm saying? Because I didn't really kick it with 10 niggas like that. It's like five of the homies, you know what I'm saying? So... I remember getting on the bus, and we it's a long-ass ride from South Carolina all the way to Kentucky. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I forget the time frame, but it was a long-ass time. So anyways, so I remember us getting to Fort Knox, Kentucky, and it was dark, right? And we trying to see, but we can hear people, like the windows is tinted, but we, try, we can hear people like running, like in formation, you know, here we go, here we go, on the road, on the road. If you've been in the military, then you already know what kind of cadences I'm talking about, right? So... Uh, so we're trying to look out the window like, man, where the hoes at? You know what I mean? At least that's what I was doing. You feel me? So I remember they get us in this big ass auditorium and it, and it had to be like 40 of us up in that bitch. Right. So, you know, you got to take the oath again and all that other shit when you get to the new basic training. So I'm looking around and I'm like, you know, we'd already been talking about it on the bus, but now it's starting to set in. Reality's starting to set in. I'm like, where are all the bitches at? You know what I'm saying? So I remember there was a drill sergeant behind me and I was like, hey, drill sergeant, I was like, don't get me wrong or nothing, like, where are all the females at? He said, females? You know where you're at? You're at Fort Knox, Kentucky. I said, okay, what is that supposed to mean? He said, this is an all-male basic training. Bruh, I, the same disappointment that my dad had in me when I said I wanted to pick a job with the bitches, Bro, was the same exact disappointment I felt for the Army and my recruiter and this job counselor. Bro, I, if, if I could have rang somebody's neck, I would have rang somebody's fucking neck. I'm like, bro, I did not join the Army to be in a sausage party, right? I'm like, God damn, bro. Like, that shit just broke my whole spirit. I ain't even gonna lie, right? 
But it turned out to be a good thing. And I'm going to tell you why. Because in all male basic training, even though there's a lot of testosterone there, I didn't have no problem with that because, nigga, I was running shit too. Me, McCoy, uh, Clark, Ross, all of us niggas was running our shit. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, uh, Ray O'Lottermill, I remember him too. I don't know where. Uh, I think McCoy is on my Facebook, but Ray O'Lottermill was like my best friend. He was from Texas. Charvis McCoy, that nigga was from like Stone Mountain, Georgia. That was like one of my best friends in basic training. Then you had Ross and Clark on the other side. Terry Clark from Florida and Ross uh, from South Carolina on the other side. That was like my clique, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and I remember, uh, you know, Later on, when we did get to AIT, I seen some of the people that got left uh, at Fort uh, Jackson, South Carolina, and they were describing their basic training, and they hated shit. Like, they was so mad because uh, what happens was, is, like, people would be trying to show out for the girls, and that would just make the drill sergeant smoke their ass harder. Like, and smoking is like, like you having to do push-ups or you having to run extra laps and shit like that. So when they was telling me them stories later on, I was pretty much glad that I didn't go to a co-ed basic training. I was pretty glad that I went to an all-male basic training. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm in basic training, man, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm getting all kind of male up in that bitch because I forgot to tell this part of the story. The night that I had to go to MEPS, uh, I had to stay over a night. You know what I mean? And I met this girl named, uh, should I say her name? I'm going to say her name. Clanisha Moore. You know what I'm saying? Clanisha J. Moore. That was her name. She was from Lufkin, Texas. And uh, she was joining the Navy. You know what I mean? Now, in MEPS, at the hotel, they have all the branches of service. But she was shipping out the very next day. I was just coming in for my physical. I had to come back for another ship date. You know what I'm saying? But she ended up giving me her information. And all through basic training, I'm writing her. Now, mind you, I joined basic... I, I, uh, joint the army matter of fact I forgot to tell this part of the story too so not only did I pick my job that day that my dad was there with me but I picked my duty station as well right and so the duty station that I picked was they didn't have no more CONUS assignments all I had to pick from was overseas assignments which is very rare like I didn't realize how lucky I was to be able to pick an overseas assignment right but I wanted to get like I said I was so infatuated with this chick named Misty at the time that my stupid ass picked Korea because it was the shortest term uh that you could go before you could come back and pick a closer duty station to home right and what I didn't realize is that was a hardship tour meaning like you can't bring no family or nothing and people this is like the duty station where nobody wants to go Korea and I'm talking I don't know about now like I've been to Korea you know if you scroll back you can see some of my Korea videos and it was cracking in Korea when I went but this is 20 years 23 years ago right nobody wanted to go to Korea back then you used to have to take anthrax shots and everything right which I did end up taking because I had orders to go to Korea I skipped Germany I skipped Puerto Rico I skipped Italy I skipped probably Hawaii too you know what I'm saying because I think that was considered an overseas tour too I just wanted to go do a one-year tour somewhere so I can hurry up and get back to this chick like I said thinking about fucking women but it all worked out and I'll probably get to that a little later on right it all worked out though anyways so uh so I picked Korea you know what I mean now fast forward like I said I met this girl named Clanisha in the MEPS she was shipping out I had to come back like a week later before I shipped out, but she gave me her her, uh, her information. So we writing each other all the time. I'm getting stupid ass mail. I'm getting mail from Misty. I'm getting mail from Clanisha. I'm getting mail from my family. I'm getting mail from little bitches that I went to high school with. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I, I was getting so much mail that when they called mail, every nigga was hella jealous because I was getting all the mail and these niggas, some of these niggas wasn't getting mail from nobody, but I was getting like three or four letters a night. And somewhere... I was so buff coming out of basic training because I was doing so many push-ups. After you get like three pieces of mail, you got to do like 10 push-ups for every additional piece of mail that you get, right? So, 
I was doing hella push-ups, right? But uh, basic, male basic training is cool because you, you, it's all males. Like, ain't nobody got to worry about these bitches or nothing like that. Take your mind and make you focus on all the things that they're trying to teach you. You know what I'm saying? But me, man, shit, I had all kind of hustles up in that bitch, too. You know what I'm saying? I remember one time in basic training, right? I remember one time in basic training, right? Uh, they used to have, like, a little... Like, at the Fort Knox, I was in Charlie Company. Charlie... Charlie, yeah, Charlie Rock, hard as a rock. You know what I mean? That used to be our little, our little tagline. But there was a row of phones, right? And right across, maybe like a hundred yards from the row of phones. Now, a hundred yards is a is a long little way. But there's like a little shopette over there, right? So I remember they used to let us go to this shopette like once a week, and all we could buy was like toiletries writing utensils no candy no cds no none of that other shit that they had in there uh it was considered contraband so we could only buy like the uh toothpaste fucking toothbrush deodorant all that kind of shit right but me like i said i think i'm the baddest motherfucker at this time i'm i always been a rebel no matter what stage of my life i'm still trying to break break out of my rebelliousness you know what i mean sometimes uh but I was like, bro, I'm going to get some money in this bitch. Like, like I'm going to get some money. Because like I said in those YCP videos, right? If you go to that YCP video, I had already done this kind of shit. So it wasn't nothing. It was just another transition for me to do this shit again once I had it figured out, right? But I remember this one night in particular, right? Now, mind you, I'm... Uh, when when everybody go and they use the phone, I'm you used to have to go with a battle buddy, you know what I'm saying? So I use the phone for like 15 minutes, he'll use the phone for 15 minutes. And we used to get like an hour on the phones, you know what I'm saying? If you had a, a phone card, that's another thing that we could buy in there, right? Was phone cards, right? So uh so I remember I used to when when we would go out to the phones, I would just run now. This is another thing. Like being in all male basic training, there wasn't no snitching. Like niggas wasn't snitching on people. If we went with bitches, they'd probably be snitching about shit like this, right? So, anyways. I remember when when my homie would go to the phone, I used to catch ice. And mind you, I went in the fall time. I started basic training in September, like maybe October, right? So it used to get dark hella early, right? So that that helped. So when we would go out to use the phones, I would just sprint like a hundred fucking yards to the store real quick. Now, mind you, at the store, they wasn't really tripping because everybody's dressed in that uniform anyway. It's an active military base. So they didn't really know the difference. As long as you had an ID card, which I did, you could buy shit. You know, they didn't know if you was in basic training or not. You know what I mean? So uh, I remember I used to run to the store, run to the store. And what I would do is I would buy hella candy. I would buy CDs. I would buy CD players. I would buy whatever contraband I could buy. And I would come back to the to the barracks and I would sell that shit. Anybody who was in basic training with me, y'all know this shit is true. I made hella money in basic training. Like I had pictures of me with just like stacks of 20s because I was making so much money within the uh the the nine weeks that I was there for uh at Fort Knox, right? So I remember one night in particular, man. I remember one night in particular, bruh. We go out, it's like clockwork I'm doing this shit, right? So I remember I ran out, you know what I'm saying? I, I took off, just like clockwork. And I come back, and nobody's at the phones. Like, usually I would make it back on time for, for people to still be on the phone so it wouldn't look crazy when I walk back in with a bunch of shit, right? So, and what I used to do is, is I used to hide my shit in the bathroom. Used to have these tiles that you could push up. So every time they would hit niggas' lockers and shit, they would never find none of my shit because I always had it hidden in a bag up in that in that tile up like on the third or fourth, like the very last. It was like the fourth fucking stall. You know what I mean? So, uh, so I never got caught with any of my shit, right? So on this particular night, I run back and. Uh, what happened? Oh, everybody's gone from the phone. So I'm like, fuck. I'm the last, I'm the only nigga out here. I got pockets full of paydays, candy bars. Like, like it's winter time. So I had on my winter jacket and it had shit in both pockets. Like these is the old BDU coats. You know what I'm saying? I had shit in my cargo pockets. I had shit in my back pocket. I had every pocket that I had, I could feel. If you open my coat, I had four pockets. I had shit filled up. I, I was stuffed to the max this night in particular, right? So I remember I get up to the barracks and they like, 
everybody's shit is just all over the place, including my shit. They had, while we was out there using the phones, they had just, see, they used to have the codes to everybody's locks or keys to everybody's locks. So while we was out there using the phone, they were just tossing everybody's shit, looking for contraband, or maybe they was just doing it to be assholes, because they used to do that shit just to be assholes sometimes and keep us on our toes, right? It was a little bit of a combination of both, right? So, so they tossed all of our shit, and I remember coming back in there, and they like, Castro, where was you at? I was like, man, I was using the bathroom, you know what I mean? And so they were like, using the bathroom, but really when I walked in, they wouldn't like, they had, everybody had their backs to me, so they couldn't really see where I came from, right? So I told them, hey, I was just down here in the bathroom, you know what I mean? So they were like, all right, well, get your ass in here and get in the front lean and rest. And I remember I had to, I was in the push-up position. All my shit is, is thrown, everybody's shit is tossed, you know what I'm saying? They end up finding everybody's shit, the shit, same shit that I was selling them, because these stupid motherfuckers didn't know how to hide shit. But it was cool, because every time somebody would get busted with their shit, they would just come back to me to buy more shit, because I was the only nigga that had enough nuts and heart to go over there and get the motherfucking contraband and bring it back, you know? As you can see on my arms, have money, have heart, man. I always had motherfucking heart which allowed me to have motherfucking money, you know what I'm saying, and I believe in that shit to this day, if you don't got no heart, man, you ain't gonna get no money, man, have money, have heart, man, you feel me, which translates to ain't shit, I ain't gonna do legal or illegal to make sure that I'm gonna survive around this bitch, and if you know me at any point in life, you already know what's up, you feel me, so anyways, uh, I remember after the drill sergeants left, everybody had to clean up they shit, you know what I'm saying, and sure enough, like clockwork, niggas started lining up by my bunk, like, hey, Castro, we know you went to the, because everybody knew I went to the store, you know what I'm saying, nobody said nothing, though, so they was like, man, what you got, bro, I made, I must have made like $200 that night off of candy bars and all kind of shit, I was selling paydays, Kit Kats for $5 a piece, you feel me, and, and niggas was so mad about they shit getting took that they was willing to pay whatever, you know what I'm saying, but like I said, I had the plug on the CD players, the CDs, motherfucking I was stealing sodas from the motherfucking cafeteria and bringing them back and selling those you know what I mean like I had broken one time I had broke into the motherfucking uh cafeteria because they like in the cafeteria you used to have to like like two or three people used to have to work that shit for all the people coming for lunch and breakfast and all that shit, right? In between the shit that you have to do in basic training. Well on the days that I would do it they used to have this little door and I and I would just unlock that bitch and and at night I would just sneak over there and go in there and steal all the like they used to have like cases of soda and shit for the workers that worked there. It wasn't for none of the none of the recruits or nothing. It was for all the adults that worked there and shit. They used to have sodas and shit. But what I would do is I would just load up a whole bunch of sodas in a bag and I would just run back up and sell them shits for like five dollars, you know what I'm saying? A piece or two for five. That's what I had, right? So uh Man, I had all kind of little hustles going on in there. I used to have a nigga drawing. Uh, man, another hustle I had was there was this nigga that used to draw pictures. He could take anybody's picture and draw that shit. You know what I'm saying? And I would sell those shits for like $100 for a whole picture. Like an 8 by 10 piece of like lined paper, uh, loose leaf paper with like a hundred dollars you get any family member or any kind of picture that you had drawn i was making money off of that shit you feel me but yeah man i i got a little carried away in this story but i hope that y'all were entertained uh after i ended up graduating basic training you know what i'm saying that night that i graduated basic training i went to the strip club for the first time you know what i'm saying ever in my life and it was cracking. I used another nigga ID card because I was still 17, you know what I'm saying, when I graduated basic training. And then they shipped me off to Fort Lee, Virginia. And I'll never forget. And that's a whole nother story for a whole nother day, man. But I'm about to upload some more videos right after this. So make sure you hit that subscribe button below be the, so you can be the first to know and help the channel grow. And watch more of my content on here. And if you like any of my content, man, Hey, it's, it, it costs you guys nothing to share, subscribe, like, and engage by commenting, man. So make sure you hit that, man, especially if you're a returning viewer, man. I appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button below so you can be the first to know and help the channel grow. King.